Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, this is it, part number 18 of the Mortal Kombat 2 restoration. <laughs> Can you believe it? Part number 18. You know what though? We're almost done. We are almost done. Maybe, I don't know, we will finish the game in this episode right here. So anyway, let's kind of review. Okay, so like the last video, what do we do? We, uh, well, we put the monitor in and that was a little hairy. Okay, we, we put the monitor in there and that's all in there, good to go. Um, and then we started wiring up the cabinet. You know, we hooked up the switch on the top. Um, I put the PCB in place. We screwed that in and started the wiring for that. And then in the last video, we plugged it in and nothing happened. Now, the only thing I have wired right now is the light up top, but when we plugged it in, it didn't turn on, and it should have. And then, actually, uh, after the video, I, I get a message from Daniel, who, who gave me that transformer. He's like, yeah, John, I don't think there's fuses in that transformer. So we're going to start here in this video by checking that out to see if there's fuses in the transformer. If not, we're going to put some in, and then we're going to just keep going with the wiring. And really, that's all that's left with this project. We just have to wire up the cabinet. we got to hook up the power supply. we got to wire the control panel. We have to crimp a, a, a plug for the monitor. It's a lot of tedious work, and we're going to do it all in this episode. And again, I don't know if we're going to finish the game in this episode, but we're going to get really close if we don't. And, and right here, actually, I printed the uh, wiring diagram uh, from the Mortal Kombat 2 manual. So this is going to really help us out a lot. And actually, a, a bunch of you guys sent me emails saying, John, you know, make sure you look at the Mortal Kombat manual because all of the wiring is right there. And, and it is, actually. It's really, really well done. So you can see here how to wire up the power supply. And I guess we have to be really careful with this because of the coloring. You know, like yellow is uh, minus five volts, orange is plus 12, uh, red is five volts, black is ground, etc. So we're gonna follow this when we wire up the, the power supply. And we have a brand new HAP power supply right now ready to go. And then I have like the power wiring here and the transformer chart, um, and then the cabinet wiring diagram. So we're gonna use all of this today in this episode and really just kind of go through the whole thing step by step. And this is kind of what we do with the journey too, you know, because I, I I didn't have the harness with the journey. It was a big hacked up Tron one and I just went through the midway manual and we eventually got it working and hopefully in this video we'll see Mortal Kombat on the monitor before the video is over. Um, anyway, enough of that. Let's just go over to the Mortal Kombat here and get to work. I'm excited. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I feel like I just need this out of my life. You know, let's finish the Mortal Kombat, you know, uh, have a sigh of relief and just move on to the next thing. You know, I I'm kind of over with, uh, done with this topic. So, all right, the game is looking good though. You know, but but really, it's it's in, it's been in my way. It's it's super annoying. But anyway, let, let's take a peek here in the back. Um, I want to take a look at the transformer, and we're going to start that way in this video here. Um, uh, so let's kind of move this. So we have the transformer on the bottom here, and uh, so we have two fuses here. There's a three amp on this side, and there's no fuse. <laughs> so that's why the light was not working. And then on this side, there should be a one amp, and there's no fuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the other transformer uh, I have uh, because I had ended up with two transformers. So let's grab that one, and we're just going to we're going to steal the fuses from this one. I mean, I have brand new fuses in my car, but let's just take it from here because it's nice and simple. So here's the original, tr or not the original, but one of the other transformers that I had. And let's see if we can check the fuses out in this thing. So this should be three amp. This is kind of like a push and turn kind of deal. So let's take a peek here. God, my eyes. Yeah, that's three amps. So let's steal the three amp one from this. And then later I can replace the fuses. Actually, I'm sending this to a viewer. Um, they asked me for it and I don't need it. And, and someone gave it to me, so I'll just pass it on. All right, so let's go ahead here and put the three amp in. Okay, and then this one right here to the left should be a one amp. So let's go over to the original, or not the original, the other transformer. This one probably works fine. It just wasn't as pretty as the one we used. All right, so this should be one amp. One amp slow blow. So let's take a peek here. Just wanna make sure that uh, the values didn't change. My God, I have such a hard time reading these. 
It's getting worse. Yeah, that's one amp. Okay. Yes, John needs glasses. It's getting to that point, I think. <laughs> I, I'm being very stubborn about it, though. Uh, all right. All right, here we go. Okay, so now we have fuses in the transformer. So now if we plug it on, the uh, marquee light should go on and the monitor should power on. Because all that's hooked up right now, if we were to take a look here, is... So these, this is loose here from the transformer. Uh, I believe this is ultimately going ultimately to be power for uh, the power supply. So I have the wiring going to the monitor right here, and then the wiring on this side that goes up over here. This goes to the top to the switch, and then also to the uh, marquee light. So right now, if we turn it on, the only power that, we're, that that's going anywhere from the transformer is to that uh, is to the um, to the monitor and to the marquee light. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And if if all that's working, the marquee light and the monitor should power on, which is what I want to happen here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, and let's see if the marquee light comes on. Now that we have fuses in there. All right, here we go. Trying to find a power strip. All right, I'm plugging it in. And I don't know if, uh... all right, I heard it just turn, come on. All right, good. So it's all working. Power is going to the game. And then the monitor should be powering on right now. I mean, it's getting no signal. Let me see if there's any neck load here on the monitor. I can't really tell though. The monitor should have power right now. Let's go like this. Let's take the glass off and I'll just see if there's any static on the tube. I have to take this off anyway. All right. No. Hmm. Is this on? I could crank the fly back. All right, let me, uh, let's turn the game off. I'm gonna get my multimeter. Let's see if the monitor uh, is actually getting power. One sec. All right, actually, I just turned it back on here and I kind of poked my head around the corner and I could see the neck glow. So the monitor is on, it's totally on. I just wasn't feeling that static electricity in the front here. Um, but if you wanted to be sure it was getting power, you could disconnect this connector right here and put your uh, two leads on uh, inside the connector and me measure the AC voltage. It should be somewhere around 120 volts. So, all right, so the monitor's on, the marquee light's on, the transformer is working. So we need to move on to the next steps here. So let's grab the, uh, the wiring diagram. I, I think I want to start wiring up the, uh, the power supply. Uh, the HAP power supply, which is going to be this guy right here. And really, after we wire this up and then make our video connection, we should be able to turn the game on and see Mortal Kombat. At least that's the hope here. So I'm going to have to go in the garage right now and grab the wiring harness because it's not down here. And I actually have two of them. We're going to have to look at the, the big mess of wires that we have and kind of figure out the best path going forward here. So hang on, let me grab that. All right, here's the big mess of wires we have. <laughs> um, so we need to kind of figure out what the hell is going on here. So this, there's actually like two harnesses here. Uh, Daniel and another viewer sent me these. Uh, so thanks guys. But so this one right here is clearly for the control panel. Um, it has all the micro switches and all that. So let's see if we can separate this one and just kind of put it to the side. Okay, so that's a control panel harness. And that actually looks like it's in really good shape like tremendous shape here and it's actually kind of nice it has the micro switches on here because we'll be able to plug this in and then put it in test mode and just hit the switch and we'll be able to know exactly what each one is so that looks kind of like all complete that's awesome 
that's going to the side. Now we kind of need the main harness here um, for the video and the power. And I think the one I need to use is hacked up to a degree. So let's see if we can get this apart. Let's see. So this one's got the test switch in here. Jeez, old Pete. Well, it looks like I separated it completely, so. All right, so this one has the test switch all wired up in here, which might be good. So this has the test switch. All right, so let's look here. It's got the twist test switch. It's got the slam switch. Um, I'm guessing these go to the um, coin-up switches. Maybe the lights on the coin door. Okay. And then here's the coin meter. Okay. So that looks pretty good right there. So this is all coins, uh, coin door stuff on this side. And then let's continue through here. All right. Just trying, all right, here's all our power right here. So that goes to the power supply. And we'll be able to use that diagram and really kind of make heads or tails of that. All right, so what's this? Boy, this is a mess. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so annoying. Uh, Alright, here. Here's video. And this is all hacked up, so we're going to have to hack a... Uh, not hack. We're going to have to crimp a new uh, connector for that. So this is RG and red, green, and blue... Colors don't really jive though, but we'll see if we can figure it out. So that all goes here. We might be able to look at the pin out and figure out what's what. So I kind of am thinking this is probably the harness we're going to use. Just don't know where to begin right now. I probably with this power. I kind of feel like, though, I really want to untangle this mess, though. Jesus. All right, come on. All right, so that's a connector there. Oh, so that's going to connect down at the, at the uh, transformer, probably giving us power, I think, to the power supply. Oh, no, look at this. So this has... What is this here? All right, let's see. We, we, I mean, we can look at the wiring diagram and figure it out, but this connector here goes from this end here to this end here. So I'm not sure what that's all about. And if we look at this, so violet, violet, and... So violet and violet yellow is the AC in, which is nowhere to be found here. Which means that this... Violet and violet and yellow is indeed the AC. So probably what was here was this nine pin connector that then uh, went from here to the power supply. So what we probably could do is just use this here, violet and violet and yellow, and I can just put some spade connectors on and go directly to the power supply. It's just that we won't have this very uh, neat connector here. But this connector, though, is picking up two other wires. Do you see this? So this is the AC coming from the transformer that's going to feed the power supply. But then it goes to this 9-pin connector here, okay, which has our purple and, and our violet and violet and yellow, which is the AC for the power supply. But it's also picking up these black and orange wires from somewhere else. And I'm not sure where those are going to go. Let's see if we can figure that out. Um, actually, I, here's power, okay, so, I'm looking for, so violet, 
two power supply is violet, violet and yellow, and green and yellow. It's green and yellow. Oh, green, green and yellow is the is the uh, field ground here. So if we look at the bottom. You can see it's AC, AC, field ground or earth ground, or whatever. Or that's actually chassis ground, I guess. Uh, plus 12 volts, minus five. No, actually, that is that's earth ground, and then this is the chassis ground right here. And then or the logic ground. I, I you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. <laughs> minus five and plus five. All right, so the FG here should be the green and the yellow, and you can see there's a jumper wire that goes from there to the uh, the chassis ground or the you know the the, the grounds that are like on, on on the monitor and everything else. Um, so to the power supply is green and yellow. So where where's green and yellow in this whole mess? And where does black? Just seeing if I can make sense of that. Where is black coming from? I don't see that anywhere on this, so we have to go to here. So, black and orange. It says it's coin three. Is that what we had there? Where's that nine pin connector? Goes up here. Here it is. So it says here that black and orange, so I have black and black and orange. So, black and black and orange goes to the coin door. So is there a square connector on the coin door? I don't see one. Hmm, this is a bit of a mystery, this, this plug right here. All right, let's, let's keep going here. I know this is boring, we're just untangling the uh, harness, but at the same time, I'm trying to educate myself as to what exactly is happening here. All right, so that's gonna go on the board, pretty self-explanatory. This is the video. This connector is gonna go on the board here with all the blue wires. So all the blue wires here is this connector right here, which is start, up, down, left, right, all that stuff. So that's this. And that's gonna correspond. So where's this going? I bet you that was cut. Let me see where the blue wires are going. So the blue wires, okay, I see. I see what's going on. All right, so all of these blue wires here are, these are the JAMA connectors, okay? So these are all coming up, and then they're going to the connector, right? All the blues, are they? No, they're not, where are they going? The blues are coming here. They're going down, they're going down, they're going down. Okay, and then they're going to this connector. So I believe what's gonna happen here is that we are gonna connect one end of the blue to the board. And then that's going to come down here. Okay, where's the edge connector? So I'm trying to figure this out. So we have this 15 pin connector here, which is all the blue wires. And then it comes down here to this rail thing right here. Oh, I see. That then comes down to the, to the JAMA, to the main harness cable. Right, it doesn't exactly show where it goes in. All right, let's see if I can make sense of this. So here's our JAMA connector, okay? On your mark. Then out of that, yes, comes that, okay. <coughs> Main harness cable is right here. And then, Let's take a look now at the control panel wiring. So here's those blue wires again. I'm thinking this is duplicate here. Oh my God. This is gonna be a half hour of me just looking at everything, trying to figure it out. 
So what I'm not sure is if this is redundant. This blue stuff. Yeah, I think this is a second cable. So this here... I think I have two sets of these blue ones. So these are labeled player three and player four. So if I were to just completely... Can I just get rid of this? Yeah, I can. This is loose. Okay, so that's why I was getting confused. Alright, I bet you this goes with the other harness. I see. Okay. Alright, so this, I get it. So this is going to all go to the control panel, right? And then I have a blue connector and a purple connector. And it says player one and player two. And then the purple one, the blue one, is going to be all of our grounds, isn't it? Yeah, it is. No, okay, blue is all the signals. Let's see, and then the blacks are all the grounds. Doesn't make sense. I have purples and then whites. Where's all the whites going here? Ah, okay. Oh, joystick. I bet you it's joystick. Yeah. Let me look at the manual to see if, uh, well actually, let's look here, at control panel. All right, so. I'm looking to see which one's the joystick. This is the control panel, oh here we go. So. Blue, black, blue, brown, blue, yellow, blue, green. Okay, so the blue, one low punch, one low kick. Okay, so the blue is the punch and the kick. So that's, I, I'm, one low punch, one low kick, one low punch, one low kick. Okay, I get it here. All right, so the white and the black, the white and the brown, the white and the red is player one, up, down, left, right, high punch, block. See, the, the JAMA doesn't have, um, it doesn't have, JAMA is like uh, a four-way, eight-way joystick and uh, 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 four buttons, I believe, is the max. And Mortal Kombat has six buttons, so they had to add like this kick harness, and Street Fighter is the same problem. So, so this stuff here is part of the JAMA connection, okay, as so it comes down here. Right, the JAMA, and then, and then this right here is is going to be what we're calling the kick harness, and it's the blues. So the blue is our kick harness, okay, and that's going to go directly to the board. And then the whites and the violet wires are coming directly from the JAMA harness, okay. I, I'm starting to get my head around this, okay. So so we have these connectors here, okay, and so the white and the the white and the violet is coming from the JAMA harness and I'm guessing this is going to plug into the board or at least the kick harness is I don't really see spots on the board for this oh I get it so this okay I, I think I got it now so all right so the blue so the white and the violet are going to plug into the harness and there's going to be receptacles for them yep right here so Here's the here's where I plug the blue one into, and then here's where I plug the white. So it's the blue that is um, going to the kick harness. I got it. Okay, I I, I got it. <laughs> We're getting it. All right. So this is going to plug into that little control panel harness, and then the other end of it is going to go into our our PCB here. That's our kick harness. Okay, and then the white and the purple. Okay, is going to plug into the control panel harness, but then that ultimately is going to terminate in here at the JAMA because the white and the and the violet is part of the JAMA harness. All right, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. All right, so I, I think we're just going to just dive into this here. I, I, I feel a little bit more confident about what's going on. I think the only thing that's tricky is is we're going to have to just crimp a video cable 
and also figure out the power and um, I wonder if I have a nine pin Molex here. All right, let me get the power supply. I, th I think I want to do that first. Um, actually, before we do that, I got to go check on the brisket. <laughs> I'm smoking a brisket, first time ever. You, you guys want to go outside and, and check it out? Hang on. All right, let's go. All right, guys, let's check on the brisket. So right here is my little Traeger electric smoker. I love this thing, it's awesome. I bought it a few weeks ago, and it's kind of transformed how I cook food and especially meat um, as compared to the traditional kind of propane grill. Anyway, I put the brisket on about noon. It's about 5.40 right now. It's been in there for about five and a half hours. I've been cooking it at 250 degrees. Now this thing is kind of maintaining the temperature. It burns pellets, okay? In here is a mixture of hickory, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, hickory and apple pellets. And there's a little auger. And basically, as it needs more heat, it basically, the auger turns and it starts burning these pellets. So anyway, let's check on the meat. Right now, it's 100, 187 degrees, the internal temperature of the meat. I'm trying to get it to about 195. And then we're going to pull it off, wrap it in foil, and I'm going to let it sit for about an hour or so. Now, a lot of people will wrap the meat. I'm not going to open it just yet because I, I don't want to open it many times. I'll, I'll just kind of tell you what I'm doing. So a lot of people will will, will kind of uh, cook it for seven hours, whatever it is, and then halfway through, they'll wrap it in foil and put it back on back on the grill to kind of steam the meat. And, and I don't want to do that because I really want to get that bark. And I've, I've watched a bunch of videos. So this is, by the way, this is the first time I've ever cooked brisket. So I'm going to try it with no foil. I'm not going to use what they call the Texas crutch, which kind of steams it, kind of makes it a little more pot roasty. I want this to be kind of like barbecue. I want that that bark, that kind of really kind of crispy edge and all that, and then hopefully the nice moist middle. Um, I've been spraying it every hour or so with this. This is a mixture of apple cider vinegar and just regular, ap regular apple cider. So anyway, again, we're at 187. I want to go to about 195. So let's take a peek here and see what's going on. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'm going to spray this down. I don't want to keep this open very long, okay? But our bark is definitely forming here. See that? And I got a pan of water here to kind of just keep everything moist. But this is looking really good. So let's close it. And, you know, the temperature drops significantly when you do that. So, all right, probably another hour at least in here. And then I'm going to wrap it in foil and then just let it sit in a cooler, actually, for about an hour. And then it, it, I guess the juices and the heat starts dispersing throughout the whole meat. So, I don't know. I'm excited to try this. I've never made brisket before. Hopefully it's good. All right, let's go back down to the basement. Okay, we're back. Uh, so the one thing I want to do real quick here, um, what we're going to do first is we're going to going to uh, wire up a connector for the AC in, which we determined was that purple. Why don't we just do that first? Uh, let me let me find that here. I am going to cut this because I went in the garage. So let, let's look what's going on here. So this is the AC in for the power supply. And then these purple wires are the, is the AC out. And then there's also these black and black and orange wires. I don't know where these go yet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this connector for the black and the black and the orange, but I am gonna cut these and we're gonna put spade connectors on because I just don't know how this originally was. I don't know where this went. And I, I think it'll reveal itself soon. Um, it, it, it's at least as far as these black and black and orange wires are concerned, because again, I don't see that being part of the power scheme. Um, again, looking at the wiring diagram, the black and the black and the orange here is for the coin door. So this must plug in to something that goes to the coin door. And I'm looking at the wiring at the coin door and I don't see any kind of anything for that. So uh, I don't know what to make of it. And I don't see anywhere to plug this in. I don't, I don't feel bad cutting these wires because I'm just going to put spade connectors on and we'll run that to our power supply. See, you can see here the black and the black and the orange. Just where do they go? On your mark. Where does that go? <laughs> and they somehow grouped it with this connector. Let's see. Black and black orange is a ground in the coin three. I guess we can look at the coin door. Coin three, let's see here. Oh. 
So there's black, orange, and black. So I don't know. And if we look here, black, orange, it goes to this coin door here. Or is that black, red? Uh, this is black, brown. It says coin three, though. I don't have a coin three. Something tells me that we're not going to need any of that. And I'm going to have this game on free play anyway, so... I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, I just really want to get power to everything. <sighs> just kind of poking around. Just, just before we cut those wires at the on that plug. I don't see any kind of a... Uh, This is the, uh, looking at the wiring harness 10,000 times episode. So we'll probably replace the uh, service switch with this one since it's all wired up. That's it up there, same with the slam switch and probably the coin. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm gonna proceed as planned here. You know, again, we have kind of like two harnesses going on here. So, here's a nine pin. This is from the other harness. Where's the video on this one? Yeah, that's all cut too. This one's really molested, so let's leave that one alone. All right, I, I'm gonna continue as planned, okay? So let's, let's start wiring up the, um, let's wire up the power supply. All right, so we need this here. I'm gonna get my side cutters, or we just use um, crimpers. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just cut this off, strip it, and then we're gonna crimp some spade connectors on here. And this is gonna be our power. What the heck happened here? Huh. Let me just grab my side cutters. Hang on. Uh, I feel like we're going to be seeing Mortal Kombat on the monitor in a second here. Very soon. Alright, so let's just cut this off. Okay, so now basically this connector is just the whole purpose of it will be just for the black and the orange, and I think that will it'll all make sense soon. On your mark. So we'll just use that connector just for that black and orange once we figure out where it actually goes. And then this will be our power to our power supply. Okay. So let's go ahead and strip this. Hopefully these things still work. What happened here? It's like they got mangled in my bag. Okay. Looks good. So I got a couple of spade connectors here. These are kind of like the little two prong ones. And I'm gonna crimp these on here and this is gonna be our AC. For the power supply. One. 
there's two. <clears throat> All right, so now we're ready to feed power to the power supply. And then we're gonna distribute that power via the harness. Um, let me uh, lower the tripod and we'll keep going here. All right, so let's get down here and just get busy. Um, so here's our power supply. This is a HAP um, Power Pro. This is the one I like the best. Um, I've never had one fail on me. There's those generic black ones. You know, Jay and I use those at the hangar all the time, but um, I just kind of prefer this one. Don't ask me why. Uh, all right, so let's put our AC in here. This connector is a little bit too big. Darn it. I was afraid of that. Gonna have to bend it, maybe to get it in. So the the little fork here is too wide, but I think we can overcome it. So it's all labeled, you know, AC, um, field ground, ground ground, plus five plus 12 and minus five. Now the order of these does not match what was in the in the manual, so you gotta be careful of that because uh, this power supply has a different pinout, whatever you wanna call it. And in fact, let me grab the... Um, Welcome to Golden Suit. Started a game. <laughs> Let me turn this off. Hi Pat, great to be with Shut you up. today. We're here at Mystic. Hill I just started 18 uh, holes of golf over here. Let's tee it up. No, let's not. Player quit. Yes. Until next time, I'm Pat Summerall. And I'm Peter Jacobson saying so long for Golden Golf. Let me grab my pliers here. Where are they? Um, so, where are my pliers? Huh. Alright, we'll make do. Okay, where's the power supply? Right here. And where did I put the connector? Oh my god, I hate working down here so much. All right, here it is. All right. I'm just gonna kind of bend these in a little bit. On your mark. I guess I'll just use this. I can't find my pliers. So we're hooking up the AC right now. So now I want to grab the harness. On your mark. Okay. All right, so let's take a look here. So red is five volts. I can't tell where this camera is looking. It's driving me crazy right now. <laughs> here, there, that's much better. All right, so I... Uh, 
Five volts is red, black and black is ground ground, minus five is yellow. So let's grab the harness and just start attaching this stuff. So here's the end of the harness here. So let's go ahead and grab our five volts, which is the red. And we'll attach that to our power supply. And so if we look on here, it's minus five plus 12 and then five. So the third one is five volts. So we have kind of double connectors going in there. Uh. Wow, I gotta really jam that in there. Five volts is in. All right, so so yellow is minus five, according to the diagram, which is this last terminal down here. Orange is 12 volts according to the diagram, which is this center one right here. All right, black and black is ground and then Green, huh? Oh, green, and then he, what? Hang on a second. All right, let's look at this. So it's it shows here green. Oh, this is green. Then it says green dash yellow. And it's pointing to this. So we have this jumper right here. See that? That goes from earth ground to chassis ground. Okay? See that? And that says that should be green dash yellow. Now if we look at the harness, there is a green dash yellow wire that looks like it's supposed to be the jumper. See that, how short it is and it just kind of terminates here? So I'm guessing that this goes from one of these grounds over to this ground, but then this ground's supposed to continue to the earth somewhere. So I probably should add that unless there's something down here. You know, we could have it kind of terminate down there at the transformer. I probably should make that wire. And I don't seem to have that wire. I think we should make it though, and we can have it go to this right here with these other earth grounds. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but right over there, we can have it run to that. But I'll have to get a wire and crimp that, con that, that little round connector on, and then we'll loosen this and then tighten it on down there. I think we should do that. Um, on your mark. it would be the right thing to do. 
So let's let's continue here, and I'll I'll go make that. But this this right here, this little yellow and green wire is going to go from field ground to our chassis ground, and then from there to that nut back there. Let me go to the garage and get some wire and see if I can find those connectors. I'm pretty sure I have one of those round connectors we could put around that nut back there. So, all right, hang on a second. Actually, hang on a second, right here. Here's green and yellow. I found it. This goes all the way to the coin door. That's interesting. So this is this green and yellow wire goes right to the coin door. You don't think that this went right to the power supply, do you? Let's take a look here. So at the power supply, monitor board. Um, optional bill acceptor oh see the bill acceptor gets coin three by the way which was that black and orange that we couldn't figure out where it went we don't need that oh that's why that was part of the har power harness i don't know all right let's keep looking here um so coin door so where's the power supply Here it is. Two transformer. Five volts, 12 volts. I don't think the power supply's on here. So the coin door has a green and yellow as a ground. It doesn't really show up as the pinout though. Coin door. Yeah, there's no green and yellow on there. Hmm. I'm just wondering if I want to ground the coin door basically to the power supply. And because I don't think the coin door though is tied into any other ground. Because I don't see any, any other ground wires, right? And I feel like this should all go down there to the transformer. I'm wondering how I should do this. I feel like I'm missing. Here's power wiring. Light fixture, power supply, two monitor. Um, green and yellow. See that goes right to earth ground right here from the light fixture. So I'm trying to see where the green and yellow from the light fixture goes. Fixture green yellow goes right to ground. Power supply green yellow goes right to ground. I see. See this right here? Power supply green yellow, green yellow ground. Monitor green yellow right to ground. So everything's just terminating right to ground, earth ground. So I think what I'll do though, I'm gonna continue with my plan and then we'll figure out this later on the coin door. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that wire and I'm going to terminate it on the ground down there. I think that's just a smart thing to do. Power supply, green, yellow, ground. And so I'm going to use that ground that's down there. So, all right, let me go to the garage, get some wire, and we'll make a connector and all that stuff. You know, I've been thinking about this. I think I'm going to run that ground that goes to the coin door to, to the um, ground on the power supply. Do I want to do that? I don't think I do. It feels strange. I think I should run it to the transformer on the bottom. But I, I'm, something tells me that this went there. That this went to the, directly to the power supply like they're talking about here. I mean, this is the green and yellow wire, right? And I have a feeling that it went here. At the end of the day, I don't think this is a big deal and whatever we do is probably gonna be fine. Um, I'm going to run this field ground to the transformer with the other field grounds and we'll, we'll just call it a day. And I got some yellow wire here. We'll just use this. Boy, 
these things really happen here. Oh, this nut came loose on the back. this here all right so let's go ahead and crimp this guy on here and get my tool And then I'll probably run that green and yellow wire down to the transformer. On your mark. And then let me get a big connector here. Let me see if I have one to go to the nut at the bottom of the transformer. Hmm. I don't know if this is gonna work. <clears throat> Trying to find a spade connector that's big enough to go to the um, nut back there. We might be able to just to wrap the wire around and tighten it down. So let's go ahead and loosen that nut back there. Those all have those little hoop connectors and I don't have one big enough. So I'm trying to see what we could put underneath there and clamp it down. I don't think the blue spade connector is gonna cut it. It's too small. I could probably just strip the wire Kind of wrap it around. So I'm just going to take the bare wire and just wrap it around this. It's going to be fine. All right. Nobody will know. And if we were to take our multimeter, we can see if we have uh, uh, continuity to the <sighs> So here's our yellow wire. And if we go from the end of this to And we do. All right, so let's continue. I think that wire is plenty long. All right, so we need to put our grounds on here. So this jumper is going to go from... So I'm loosening the grounds. All right, so this... Here's one ground. There's two grounds. And then green is our earth ground that goes from here to the chassis ground according to the diagram. 
of your mark. Get set. I have to admit, this feels a little weird, what I'm doing right now, jumping the logic ground to the earth ground, but, like, if there was a short, would it go to the board? I mean, the manual is clear as day. So let's get a connector right here for the field ground. Jamming two of these connectors in under one is kind of nerve wracking. It doesn't want to go. Get in there. Ah, this screw just came off. This is a pain in the ass. On your mark. When this comes off, it is so annoying. Jesus. <laughs> I'm ready to throw this thing right now. Um, just get in there already. Stay. Alright. Let's try this again. Okay, so we're all in, and we're gonna mount this thing like right here. I think originally it was back here. I'm just gonna put it here though, so I can adjust the voltage. Actually, I'm not gonna screw it down until, until I know the five volts is good. So what I wanna do right now is turn the game on and we're gonna check the voltage. And I realize now too that this thing right here, I believe that if I disconnect this, yep. See this right here? That's the connector that goes to the service switch and all that. That is part of this harness right now. That whole, this whole thing is intact up front at the coin door. So that's gonna be, so we can just get rid of this right now. All right, so let's put that to the side. Um, this coin counter, is that up front too? 
Yeah, I don't know about the coin counter, though. All right, so let's grab this, and we're going to get our voltage from here. Right? this now because look at see the green in the metal here which goes to that the, the green here goes to the um, to the transformer doesn't it I think it's six one half a uh, dozen another here what I did there might have been a connector that had this with three and then the green went to the ground on the transformer and then this this green goes to the transformer and then this goes to the power supply and then what I did was I used this existing cable here that did not have the ground in the middle, and we added the ground separately to the transformer. But our color lines up, purple to purple, purple yellow, yellow to purple yellow. It's just that it's not continuing the ground on. But again, this ground goes to that transformer. I did my own jumper wire to it, so same end result. Okay, so let's get my multimeter. And let's check our voltages, see, make sure that we're I'm turning the power, power on. All right, so the green light lit on the uh, power supply, which is a good sign. We're going to put our multimeter on DC volts. Ouch. And let's check our voltages. So, put this somewhere where you guys can see it. All right, so let's check our five volts. Now we don't have a load right now. You know, when you plug it in the board, you have a load. So the voltages that we're gonna get aren't gonna be completely accurate, but it's gonna give us an idea of what we're throwing on the board. So five volts is right here. 5.06, that's good. Um, and then this sh should be 12 volts. 11.77. And then minus five, actually five volts is right, that's minus five, minus 4.587, 11.77, and 5.061. So it's a little bit low, but I think it's fine. We'll check the voltages after um, we put a load on it. All right, let's turn this off. I'm just going to leave the power supply on the ground like that for now, and then we'll screw it down once everything's working. All right, game's off. So now I gotta crimp the uh, the video cable. Um, so let's do that. So I have some connectors here. I had where did I put it? From Great Plains Electronics. Uh, this is a point one five six six pin connector, and this is where I kind of buy these uh, Molex type things. And then I also have the pins for it, which are these Trifurcon 0.156. The Trifurcon have like a, uh, they kind of grab onto the um, pin a little bit more. It's kind of the pins you want to get. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and start crimping this thing. Now, if we look at the monitor back here, the pins are labeled RGB ground, okay? And then it says vertical sync. Now, there's six pins though, it's only talking about three of them. RGB, ground, and then, oh, vertical sync, and then the last one is horizontal sync or composite sync. Uh, so I, I'm wondering if I should do a four pin and a two pin. That way I could flip these around easily. RGB and ground. Why don't we do RGB and ground first, and then I'll leave the sync wires off. Because we're going to have to figure out the sync on this thing. Let's look at the wires that we have and what they are. So, 
so here it says red, green, brown. Okay, so brown is blue, by the way. And then the last one is sink. So it goes red, green, brown, and then shielded wire. All right, let's take a look at the at the wires that we have. I really wish that they didn't cut this stupid connector on this thing. Um, let's take a look down here at what we have for the monitor. Here it is. All right. Put your mark. So we have red, green, and brown. Okay, that's our RGB. And then this thing says... Crown shield. Shit. So... Okay, so the black, so if you look here, the black, oh, it's shielded with this, I get it. So this is supposed to wrap around here. There's like this little metal kind of uh, naked wire that's supposed to wrap all around the black one. That's kind of the shield. And that gets its own pin, both of these wires together. So, all right, I'm going to get all these. Let's strip this thing back a little bit. On your mark. Okay. So this white wire, this single white wire is our sink. And it's either gonna go on vertical sink or horizontal. I guess we could just try both before we commit to it though. All right, so let's go ahead and get these all at a similar length here. Won't be too bad actually. Just trying to strip this. This wire is so thin. Kind of doing a bad job here making this all the same length. Cutting these and stripping them. All right, now we got to crimp the pins on all these. So we have our uh, red, green, blue. Blue is brown. Don't ask. White is sink, and then black is ground. Let's 
this black one's crazy. Take our pin and our crimper tool. <laughs> yes, our crimper tool. All right, so we're gonna come in here, use A, like so. And this is the Molex HTR 2445A. Yes, it's Buffett's. I really need to uh, <laughs> square up with him. Um, all right, let's go ahead. And basically, you're just sticking this thing in here. On your mark. We're using the A because this is for the bigger pins. I hope I use the right connector size. <clears throat> okay. There's that. And trying to do this without this tool is, is like, not easy. All right. Basically, just sticking this in here till the plastic sheathing is towards the back, and then when you crimp it, crimp it. Oh shoot! I think that was a bad crimp. I think it'll be fine. I went in too far on that one. It's probably gonna be okay. On your mark. If you're worried, you could check continuity. Oh, my back. I'm sitting on my I'm on the ground, on my knees. I hate working down here, honest to God. All right. It's uncomfortable. Where does this go? Over here? I don't have continuity here. Here it is. I do. I just making sure the crank crimp is okay. Alright, let's do the brown one. So I'm guessing that because we have a single white wire, we have the composite sink. Um, where did my wires go? This would be so much easier if I was sitting. <laughs> Our wires. Where is it? <laughs> All right, where did they go? 
right here. So let's get this black one. Alright, one more to go. Okay, everything's crimped here in varying lengths, whatever. All right, so let's get our six pin connector. Where did I put that? Here it is, six pin. And then again, I'm looking at the little diagram on the back of the monitor, thank God. Um, now when this thing goes in here, so it's gonna go like this. See how this thing has like that little ledge here? That's gonna go towards you. It's gonna go on like this. It's gonna go on like that right there. It cannot go on the other way. I dropped it. It cannot go on. It can't go on with the ledge facing backwards. See, it hits that thing, right? So, so we know that red is going to be on the far right here. So let's take our wires and go ahead and, and put red in. All right, so we'll put red in first. And you could tell which way it goes in because there's like a little slot back here. And this flat side not the grabber side, goes in the slot side, like so. And you just kind of push this in there till it clicks, like so. All right, so green is next. Okay, green's in there. And then brown or blue is next. It's, it's blue, but the wire's brown. The, the data, the signal is blue. Okay. And then ground is next. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. All right, so ground is next, the fourth one. Okay, so now, the last wire is the white wire, and it says it's either going to be vertical sync or horizontal sync or composite sync. So if the monitor is vertical sync, it goes into the fifth one. If the monitor, if the game, I'm sorry, is vertical sync, it goes in the fifth one. If the game is composite sync or horizontal sync, it goes into the last one. I'm pretty sure that this is composite sync, but I don't want to commit to this right now. I, I just don't. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this wire out. And I'm going to kind of manually figure out which sink I have here. And I should probably get, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's vertical. But let, if we put this on here, like so, and just leave the sink out, I'm wondering if I can kind of get an alligator clip and put one on the, there and, and just do our sink that way before we commit. Um, let me get an alligator clip. Hang on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and put the alligator clip. You guys see what I wanna do here? I, I don't wanna commit my connector yet to this. So I'm gonna take this and kinda come in here and just grab this. Or attempt, or attempt to here. 
like so. And then I'll take my connector and just try to get it on there. I think that's on there. And then I'll come in here and get our sink. I think that's in. We'll come in here, grab our sink like that. Okay, well, guess what? We're ready to power this game on. So we have our five volts, we checked it. We have a video connection right now. Now the JAMA connector has a pin in this, so it can only go on one way. Now we've got all kinds of loose wires and just garbage everywhere, but let's go like this. Okay. All right. Get this out of here. So it's really not too bad. Just have a bunch of loose connectors, it looks like. There's so many random things. Like, what's this? Where's that supposed to go? Okay, so in theory right now, assuming my video connection is okay, if I turn this on, the game should come on. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys ready for this? I'm just gonna look around here and make sure there's not, no weird wires hanging out or something. All right, I'm going for it. We're gonna we're gonna turn it on. Let me get the tripod situated here. I'm gonna raise it back up. Hang on. All right, here we go. We're gonna turn it on. This is the moment of truth. All right, so the board, we got lights on the board. You guys can see that right there, indicating power. There are no lights on the bottom board, which is the sound board. Great. All right, let's go front. Oh my God. <laughs> doing the ram check right now all right we got a bit of a roll but <sighs> it's working 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 so I, I'd say the sink wire is in the right spot what does it say Dip switch. What does it say? Using dip switch coinage. Okay. Come on, boot. What is happening? All right, I'm gonna. <sighs> Why is it just saying that? All right, here. Let's do one thing. Let's let's commit to that uh, composite sink real quick. So let's turn the game off. All right, I don't know what's going on here, but we got the composite sink set up. We have blue. It looks like we're missing red and white. I don't know what's going on with that. But let's just see if we can get into the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just plug in the coin door, which should be this little harness thing that just plugs right in. This will at least give me the service switches. I don't know why it's saying using dip switch coinage. I wonder if I need to reset the dip switches 
I just turned the game off. I'm just making, I'm turning off all the dip switches so they're all just down. Because right now they're all... Let's see if that does anything different. So I just turned all the dip switches off at the board. Okay. What the hell? Using CMOS coinage. Okay. But why is it not booting beyond this? It should have went into test right there. I almost need to get the dip switch settings for the manual. Yeah, it's not even going into the test now. All right, maybe this is a, just a dip switch setting issue. Let me look at the manual, hang on. All right, guys, um, I actually just turned, I turned all the dip switches on because they're actually upside down on the board. Um, so now they're all off. Let's see what happens. So we should get the test menu now. The default setting is to having, yeah, see, so the colors either need to be adjusted or I'm missing red and green right now. So right now it's going through and testing all the ROMs. I'll worry about adjusting the colors here in a minute. I mean, we can at least see that stuff's running and all that. This, this board has a real problem though. I gotta, there's cold solder joints on here. All right, using dip switch coinage, but why are we not booting beyond this? <sighs> Let me test the voltages at the board. So, I gotta pull that freaking meat off the grill. Let's just test at the power supply real quick. On your mark. Could have a low voltage here. Five point oh six still. All right, let's see if we can test it at the board somewhere. Um, I'm gonna try to grab the voltage. one of these chips. <laughs> Can't see anything. I need a uh, where's my flashlight? <sighs> Alright, so let's see if we can I'm gonna test it on one of these chips down here on the top right leg. Let's just see what our voltage is at the board. Five point oh two. All right. Well, voltage is fine. Why is the game not booting? It's not getting past that screen. Mm. So let's see if this push on that. I don't know if this soundboard, I feel like, I want to know why it's not lighting up. All right, try it again. The soundboard red LED is not on. All right, let's see if anything different. I, I kind of just pushed on that daughter board and stuff. I kind of want to bring that board to the hangar and see if uh, it works in our Mortal Kombat. I don't even have a JAMA cabinet anymore. Down here. All right, come on. Why is it stuck on that? All right, let me... Uh, I want to plug in the coin door so I can at least see if I can access the service switches. Yeah. 
using dip switch coinage. It's stuck on that. I'm plugging in the coin door right now. It's just a simple little connector. I'm gonna turn the game off while I do this. All right, you guys aren't missing anything. I'm literally just putting a connector in. All right, coin door is now plugged into the harness. Just see if I can somehow, if I can get out of this somehow. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the game's not booting. What your mark? <laughs> I'm not getting any kind of error right now. It's it's reading all the ROMs and stuff. <coughs> Using dip switch coinage. Well, terrific. I don't really care. <laughs> oh man. All right, I gotta I gotta check the meat. <laughs> Hang on. <sighs> All right, guys, I just pulled this off the grill. And what do you think, huh? Has that bark, right? I think this is gonna be good. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap this in foil, and then I'm gonna let it sit in a cooler for an hour, okay? And then I'm gonna eat it. So <sighs> I'm excited. <laughs> Boy, that looks good. All right, let's go back to the basement. All right, guys, so what do you want to do? I, I kind of have to stop, to be honest. <laughs> so I, I don't know what to make of this right now. Actually, this is, you know, when I stop videos like this, it's actually a good thing because we can now discuss what happened here. What's going on? Why is it doing this? Uh, so leave comments below. Let's talk about this. You know, I mean, we have a couple issues, right? The game is not booting. It, it, it's getting stuck on this coinage screen, right? And then, well, I see actually three problems, right? Number one, it's not booting past the coinage thing. Number two, there's no red Thank LED on the soundboard. Is that normal? I don't know. Uh, see, it, it's stuck on this. And then number three, I only see blue. Is, is, this a, is this a simple monitor adjustment in the back of the neck board? I don't know. I need to get my mirror because I can't... I can't really get to the color pots right now. Um, this monitor doesn't have the colors on here, does it? And that's another issue is that this, this thing is all frinky. Uh, so I need to... So we gotta adjust the monitor, but I, that I'm, I will worry about way later. So yeah, the game's not booting. Uh, red LED is not on on the soundboard. I don't know if that's normal. Does that red LED come on after the game boots? I doubt it. Uh, is that red LED for power? Are we not getting power to that board? Am I missing a connector? Oh, I am missing a connector. I can see it. I am missing a connector. I can see it from here. <laughs> well, the, but the game should boot without the soundboard. Am I, am I wrong here? So look at, there's a connector down there on the soundboard that is not connected and where does that go I have no idea <laughs> oh that's for the power mm. Mm. that board's not getting any power well what connector is that all right we're gonna have to figure that out <laughs> so all right so we got to run the, the power where does that go so we got to figure out the whole power situation for the soundboard. It's not getting power. The ribbon cable's only data. The other connector is clearly power. It must go up here. So am I missing something? All right, I guess we're not fully connected yet. Maybe that's why it's not booting. So, 
All right, let's let's continue this all next week. Um, yeah, I said next week, didn't I? <laughs> I want to get this done, and I just tore up the basement tonight too. So why don't we come over here? Let's hang out for a little bit. Um, my meat is cooling. <laughs> I'm going to be eating very soon here, and uh, let's hang out. Let's do some viewer mail. Um, does that sound fun? Uh, if you guys want to send viewer mail to the show here, uh, you got to send them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. It could be a question. It could be a comment. It could be anything. Just send it to john at johnsarcade.com, and we'll read it here on the show. All right. Uh, first one. I, I actually printed a bunch, right? We haven't been here in a while, <laughs> so... <laughs> so I, I thought I'd do a little bit uh, more than usual. Uh, uh, this one here is from Lee. Uh, John, I saw you making a comment about Scratch building an arcade machine this week. I guess this email is uh, a little bit old. Uh, I sent you this a while ago. Oh, no, I guess it's not. Uh, and I thought I would forward it again, as it was uh, your channel that got me back into vintage arcade games. This was a scratch build I did earlier this year of a mini Pac-Man, 70% full size with a 13-inch CRT. My son couldn't reach the control panel on the full size one I made, so may I, so I made this for him. I uh, look forward to seeing you, Lee. So Lee sent me some photos. He, he built a scratch built Pac-Man at 70% the height. Uh, why don't we go ahead and so, show some photos here, right here. So Lee, I think that looks like a Pac-Man, but smaller. <laughs> You did a good job. So I'm wondering, are you going to put some artwork on the sides? I, I see right now they're all yellow. But man, that looks like a one-to-one -one pac man Even, is the coin door scaled down? That, that looks good, man. Good job. Yeah, you know, we talked about building scratch build cabinet. You know, I've always wanted to do something like that. Uh, you know, someone on the John's Arcade Forum uh, posted uh, uh, photos of their scratch built Crazy Kong Cabaret. Now that is something that I would love to build. I, I, I really want a Crazy Kong, I still do. Um, I think I would actually play that a lot. Uh, you know, the game, to this day, still, Donkey Kong. That's what I play the most down here. Like, like, like And that's my first game. That's the game that I want to play lately when I come down here in pole position. Um, and I think the Crazy Kong would be very similar because it's like weird Donkey Kong. Uh, moving on. Uh, this is from Justin. Hi, John. First, I want to say thank you for all the videos. Uh, you put some very useful, inf informative stuff uh, you put up. Uh, I don't want to take up much of your time, but I wondered if you could give me some thoughts on these two machines. I've been wanting to start an arcade in my basement for many years, and I'm financially able to now. These games were originally two grand, two thousand dollars, but I can get both for fifteen hundred. They are both in good working order. These will be my first purchases, so any info uh, will help. I've learned a, a few things from your channel by watching the commando and pole position vids. Your thoughts and opinions will be very helpful. Thanks for your time, Justin. All right. So Justin sent me some photos here. Let me show you guys them. All right, so we have a, a an original Pac-Man and an original Dig Dug, uh, and uh, he says that they're both in, in working order. And the seller wants fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, uh, okay. In my opinion, it's high. Okay, I I I, I would think that those would be four to five hundred dollars each that that's my opinion based on what i see and what jay and i pay for stuff and, and and all kinds of things like that right however you know they're both working okay so that's worth something right um are, are these like completely turnkey are they are they unmolested all original games for fifteen hundred dollars two of them 750 each i mean you could do worse right and if these are your first two games maybe just dive into it and do it but um, in my opinion, it's on the high side. I, you know, if you can get if you can get them to twelve hundred, you know, six hundred a piece, that feels a little bit better than fifteen hundred, seven fifty a piece. I don't know. A, a Dig Dug and Pac Man are, are, are plentiful. Um, they're not rare by any means. Uh, you could certainly wait and keep looking. You know, are you going to look for a year? Are you going to look for two years? That's the thing, though. It's like to save two hundred dollars. Do you have to wait two years to do that? So you have to think of those kind of things. You know, um, if I see a deal and it's a little bit high, but I haven't seen that game for sale in a year, I'll probably buy it because I'm not going to wait a year or two years to save two hundred dollars. You know, it's just. It's not worth it. I don't have I don't have that much time on earth to, to do that. So so I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave comments below. Um I think it's a, it's it's on the high side, okay? I don't think it's it's astronomical though. I I don't. I, I would like to pay a little bit less than that personally. 
So let me know what you do. I, I'm very curious. Uh, and that's from Justin. All right, the next one here. I mean, the dig dog and the, they don't look bad. I don't know. Maybe do it. <laughs> It's your money, though, man. Uh, all right, next one's from Troy. Hey, John, I thought uh, that if anyone would ex appreciate seeing one of these, it would be you, since you are a Crazy Kong fan. We just talked about that. <laughs> uh, he says, I picked this up uh, from a buddy of mine, and it has the original bezel marquee in the control panel, even though it has wear, it, uh, it's silkscreened metal, no markings inside or outside of the cabinet, so I don't know if, if it came this way or converted. I don't recognize the cabinet, he says. So let me show you what he's talking about here. All right, Troy, so you have a Kongorilla, and I've seen these a few times. I don't know if I've ever actually seen one in person, uh, but I, I, I believe that what you have is what we would consider a dedicated Kongorilla. Um, I believe that, okay, so in the 80s, you know, there was a ton of bootleg Donkey Kongs in the U.S., okay? Now, Crazy Kong was an officially licensed game that Nintendo licensed to, to some European companies to sell a version of Donkey Kong in Europe, okay? And that was Crazy Kong, and that was licensed, okay? But somehow, those Crazy Kong PCBs kind of leaked back into the U.S., and then companies here started making Crazy Kong cabinets, or Kong Gorilla, which is Crazy Kong, essentially. And, like, Falk, uh, uh, there was a company in, in, uh, in Rhode Island that was making like these white and pink ones and that was the crazy Kong I want but anyway at the end of the day those were all bootleg cabinets and there's probably no markings on this because they don't want to get caught <laughs> but um, the Kong Gorilla I, I believe that what you have here is is a dedicated cabinet I mean it's in a, a Sega looking cabinet it looks like a, 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 a Frogger or Zaxxon stock cabinet but I believe that's the cabinet they were putting the Kong Gorillas in and uh, and again, I, I think there's no markings on it because these, these guys didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so I think that's a cool piece. You know, I, I like stuff like that a lot more now than I did, uh, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. I would totally get a Kong Gorilla or a Crazy Kong. I just, I love Donkey Kong. And I think it's cool to play a weird, quirky version. Uh, Troy, I think you did good picking that up. I, I think it's cool. <laughs> I really do. Like, I, I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, look at that artwork. It's 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 whack. <laughs> I do think the white and pink Crazy Kong's cooler, but the white and pink Crazy Kong was a straight up rip off of Nintendo's artwork. All right, moving on. All right, next one here's from Sean. Subject line: You are freaking awesome. <laughs> Why? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so get this. He says. I've been watching your channel for a few months now. You're a genius. Well, let's, let's not go, go that far. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, please continue buying and repairing games. Uh, we didn't fix the game today. Uh, and you're actually, you've actually inspired me to buy my first game. I found a late model Miss Pac-Man on Craigslist for $100. Yes, guys. Cheap games are out there. 100 bucks. Look at that. I originally thought it was previously restored, given it had vinyl side art and yellow tea molding, but I've come to learn that towards the end of Ms. Pac-Man production run, Midway used vinyl stickers and colored variations, like a pink ghost instead of a yellow ghost on the side. Go figure. I posted a link below if you care to check out some pictures. I'll, I'll show you guys the pictures. In it. Actually, let, let, let me show you the pictures right now. So yeah, you can see he's, he's got a Pac-Man there with vinyl artwork. Uh, the bottom there is chewed up and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, he says, uh, some questions for you. Uh, which maybe you can answer in your next video. Uh, what's your opinion on replacing the Pac-Man Transformers with a new HAP 15 amp power supply? I read that it would require a jam adapter, which I'm not keen on. I feel like I want to keep the original Transformer, but uh, just replace the fuse boxes, which is better path for bulletproofing. If you recommend a HAP 15 amp, can I do it without jamma? All right, let's talk about this. So Pac-Man, the power supply is on the game PCB, okay? The transformer is on the bottom and separate. Okay, uh, so if you got a HAP power supply with the with the conversion kit, you're basically like bypassing the power supply that's already on the board. So Pac-Man's a weird one because they, you know, the, the power supply we installed today um, uh, in the Mortal Kombat that little box, like the guts of that. You know, mine's a switching, it would be a linear on the Pac-Man, but the guts of the power supply were actually soldered directly to the logic board. It's like, it's like the computer and the power supply were one, okay? And then the transformer was, was sending AC voltage to the uh, Pac-Man PCB, 
which was then converting it to DC 5 volts for the logic, okay? And so what I would recommend and what I did do in my Pac-Man restore was I replaced all the capacitors and the parts in the power supply section on the Pac-Man PCB. In my opinion, that's a pretty reliable way to go. So I would do that. I would get a rebuild kit uh, for the Pac-Man PCB. If you're competent at soldering, you could do that no problem. I think the parts are all gigantic too. I haven't done it in a long time. Um, I would recommend that. Otherwise, you kind of have to hack a modern power supply onto that. Uh, I've never done that. I'm not even sure how it really works. Uh, it's, it's obviously hijacking uh, the pinouts on uh, the harness somehow. You might have to cut wires. So I would look into a rebuild kit first. And, and this stuff's also documented too. He goes, uh, do you know where I could find reproduction Miss Pac-Man vinyl side art with the pink ghost? You seem to have a knack for finding the rare stuff. Uh, I would, uh, I would talk to Phoenix Arcade. Um, I think he's the one that's got the license right now for that, and he's doing the Pac-Man vinyl side art. So go to phoenixarcade.com, uh, talk to Darren. Uh, I don't know about the rare pink ghost. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> I do know that um, the original Pac-Mans in the beginning, the Miss Pac-Mans were all screen, screen printed directly on plywood, and then later in the production runs, they were switching to vinyl decals, you know, kind of like this midway cabinet. But I, I would go to Phoenix Arcade, uh, definitely the phoenixarcade.com, definitely the best place to buy the Pac-Man stuff. Um, it says, I have quite a bit of water damage on the bottom. Uh, did I ma make a mistake buying this? Uh, recommendations on repairing it. I was planning on repairing, uh, stripping the vinyl, cutting off the damaged sections, gluing in new wood, using a lot of Minwax or hardener, and sanding it smooth uh, for new vinyl. It sounds like you figured it out. Because <laughs> that's what you have to do. You basically have to cut the... W I mean, actually, I did do that in my Pac-Man restore. The, the whole front corner of mine was blown out, and I cut it off, and actually Adam it was in that video, and we, did, we used a biscuit joiner uh, to rebuild that corner, um, and, and I bonded it smooth. And even on mine, though, if you look in the light on the vinyl, you can kind of see the line where the work was done. But yeah, you basically need to cut the bottom off and replace all the wood, and then you know, vinyl it, uh, and then after that, sand it all smooth. Um, that's that particle board, man. That's a, th th that's gonna be a, a pain in the butt to restore, you know that. <laughs> like, I went, I, I went through the whole particle board thing, well, with Quantum, and, and with that I put laminate on first, and then that was perfect, and then I put the, the artwork over it. With the Mortal Kombat, you know, we had the raw particle board, you know, I, I clear coated it, I sanded it, uh, we, we put the vinyl on. I still got that orange peel. You could see the texture of the, the particle board. It's, it's going to be really hard to get rid of that and not have that unless you put some really thicker kind of laminate on there first. Um, and he says, how do you identify monitors so easily? I can't identify mine. It has a sticker saying September 1997, pictures below. It looks like a Wells Gardner, but I don't know, Sean. All right, Sean. So how do I identify monitor? I, you know, I... You know, there's only like a handful of monitors that really show up. You know, your 4900s, your 4600s, your Geo 7s, your K7000, 7400s, 7500s. Um, so a after a while, you, you know what they are just because there's not that many really. Um, however, your monitor stumped me. <laughs> Let me show you a photo of the monitor he has. Okay, so yeah, that is a Wells Gardner K8000 monitor. Actually, you totally stumped me, like totally. Um, I, 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 when I saw it, I, I first thought, oh, this is a Wells Gardner K7000 or something, or 7400 to 7500. Well, it was, and I was looking at images. So I went to arcadecup.com, which is Chad Edinger's website. I think it's his last name. He's a great like monitor repair dude. And I went to his Wells Gardner section and looked at the photos of the late model wells and that's what you have it's a k8000 um and uh and, and by the way the arcade's off <laughs> i don't know if you guys figure that out yet uh actually it's um it's about 11 44 it's a quarter to uh midnight here uh saturday and uh, i was editing the video and it turned out the end of the video was corrupted so i had to come back here and and finish the video because i was missing the last few minutes, these minutes right here, and me also responding to that photo of the Wells Gardner. So, <laughs> so, so. Anyway, so yes, that is a, a Wells Gardner K8000, uh, Sean. I, I don't know. Did I already answer the part about my how I can identify monitors? I, I think I did, right? I think we we already did that, right? So anyway, all right, we're, we're done, guys. 
<laughs> we're done with this video. Um, uh, so I want to thank you guys for subscribing and commenting and all that stuff. And by the way, we just hit 40,000 subscribers. It's been a very long road. <laughs> like literally, I've been, I've been making these videos for a long time. And uh, so we had 40,000 subs last week. So I want to thank you guys who sub and watch and, and continue to sub. And, uh, you know, I'd love to someday, you know, have 100,000 subs. That was always the goal. So we're not quite halfway there. So tell your friends. <laughs> So anyway, thanks guys for, for doing all that and subbing and, and commenting and, and thumbs upping and all that stuff. And if you don't subscribe, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Um, what else? Uh, so next week I want to do another video. I want to keep working on the Mortal Kombat. It's funny, I know something because since I filmed the video... <laughs> it's like it's like stuff has happened right now. It, this is like bizarro land for you guys, but I know things that I didn't know when I was recording the video about why the Mortal Kombat. I'll, I'll let you guys comment. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but I uh, I want to get that thing done as soon as possible, and I, I'm hoping maybe this fall to clean up the garage. It's a disaster right now because I want to get my cars out there, and then I, I really would like to just spend some relaxing days working on the Bronco. I think that'd be fun. So. Anyway, so comment, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, be sure to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. Uh, we do that show live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, or if you guys can't make it, you can listen to the the last week's show or the current week's show. Uh, go to iTunes uh, or your or the Google or Play Store and download the Video Game Outsiders app. Uh, it's an app that allows you to listen to my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, for free. Um, you can also subscribe. There's a premium uh, content feature uh, within it that allows you to listen to our bonus podcasts. You know, we do you know three, four, five extra podcasts a week. Uh, uh oh, the light just went out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The battery the battery on my light just died. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It just it, the battery on the light it just died. <laughs> uh, I want to go to bed. <laughs> All right, I got to finish editing this video. So so guys, thanks for uh uh watching and all that stuff. Later and bye. Da, da, da.